I was born and raised uh, for some parts of my life in Bosnia Herzegovina, um, formerly known as Yugoslavia, uh, back in uh, 989 before uh, Tito, well, right after Tito died, um, and then Yugoslavia dispersed. That's when Bosnia Herzegovina kind of became of, and then spiraled into a whole lot of other things, but yeah, Bosnia. I mean, the country that you would have farmer's markets and you could walk and play with kids. Kids would literally run across town by themselves at the age of like five, like no joke. And you would be okay because everybody knew. Everybody knew everybody from across towns. You could know one person in the little city and you, they would know you across probably like 150 miles and they'd know your parents and they'd know, you know. It was really nice. To be honest, I don't remember the first 15 to 18 years of my life very well. Um, the first couple of years, um, I do have some recollection of. We used to live up on a hill and um, my parents built a house and we would overlook our little village and, and then the war happened. You have the governments that come into and then the rise and falls of things and then they destroy it all. Prior to that slightly, but in 1990, the war outside of what was kind of happening or the talks of war kind of reached Bosnia. It was kind of like, okay, we're this is what we're going to do. And literally overnight, um, life changed. It went from being sleeping and, you know, looking out the window and seeing bright moons and stars and to waking up to a burnt village, to waking up to people screaming, to, to waking up to just all kinds of stuff. And I wasn't the only one necessarily who lost a lot of family or friends. And I was fortunate that I didn't lose the immediate family, if you will, like my mom, dad, my sisters. I was so fortunate, so fortunate. But other people lost a lot more. So my uncle escaped here, um, actually, right after he was freed from prison. And then we were, we lived in Bosnia for a couple more years on the run. and then. Um, in 97, we got papers. Uh, we didn't know if my uncles are alive or not, and just got one word that, hey, the Ameri you've got an application to come to America. And my dad, I remember this so vividly because my dad said, no, we're not leaving. Like, this is our home, this is where we're staying. And we were in a hideout at that time too. And he said, no, we're not leaving. Um, and my mom just looked at me and she was like, you know, I leave with or without you kind of thing. And having a woman make a decision, specifically in that time or in that place, and to defy a man in, in that, to know that history of that family was really like, I remember that moment because my mom like stood up and I was like, and I knew what my mom went through as a woman, part of that, but stood up to that. And then we came here. And I don't know, I haven't looked back since in that sense of any of that. I've, I've accepted everything that this new country has given because I have freedom. Teen years weren't fun. I was the oldest of six kids. Um, my dad's an alcoholic. Um, my mom had a lot of, obviously, a lot of issues, mental health issues. Um, of course, medical issues on top of that. And so she spent years on antidepressants and drugs and trials and this and that and electroshock therapy and all kinds of different things to kind of have a normal sense of life. And, you know, I took the brunt of the punches. I took the brunt of the things I needed to take care of to take care of the kids that need to be here. Um, I attempted suicide on multiple attempts. I went through the eating disorders. I went through cutting. I went through completely hopelessness of nothing. Like, nothing. Like, how can I come to America, come to here, and like have, you know, you go through the family issues that you're going through, and you go through the bullying that you're going through, and then you're an immigrant, and now, you, you know, now the whole status quo of what you are, and you don't know English that well, and so now you, what do you do? Like, there's a whole, and you're 11. So how have you changed to overcome, like, the struggles of PTSD? It was because of something my son had made me do the, the night before. He said, hey mom, I need you to turn me into chaos. And I do makeup, like I'm a makeup artist. At that time, that's what I was like, I'm a makeup artist. I do hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of my powers and my knowledge of what I do. So, um, so you know, he's like, turn me into chaos. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, I, I do makeup. Like, I don't know what to, like, I, come on. He goes, mom, you said you try. I'm like, you little sucker. So I was like, you know what, fine. I don't know what to do. So then I was like, tell me what chaos is. So I look it up and it's this weird painting thing. I'm like, oh, it's a little two thing. I can draw that, it's black, it's dots. I'm like, that looks easy. And he goes, but you need to do your face too. I'm like, well, I mean, I beat my face all day. Okay, well, I can beat it. 
And he's like, no, I'm gonna pick the Night of the Dead. And he like picks the half face, right? It's got all these intricate little things and all these crazy things. And he goes, but you need to do a full face. And I'm like, so you're really setting me up for failure. Like, you're not even giving me a chance. And he's like, do it, do it. And I'm like, okay, fine, like, let's try it. And I did it. Dude, I did it. I didn't know it was good. I had no idea I was good. I had no clue I was good. I set myself to say I do hair and makeup. Like I set that limitation and this four little four year old was like, no, you're gonna just do a whole face. It's like, go body paint. And that's when I got into, that's where I found art. Literally, I found art through my son, through that expression, through painting that one face, I found art. And I went into, dwelling into body painting, completely taking a human body and putting what was in my head into a story piece. And that's been my canvas so far, my favorite canvas. And I went into painting on, on canvases, actual canvases, to photography, um, to design, to, to creating productions now, to doing so many different things in the aspect of coping with my own PTSD. I know exactly that I'm gonna succeed and I know exactly why. It's because I desire that. I desire the feeling that gives me this peace. I found it. I found this peace that gives me purpose in my own life, that doesn't put me onto the social standards or norms. I can't change what happened to me. I can't. And I, I never want to. I am who I am for every bully, for every person that called me a name, for every person that said I wasn't nothing, for every family member that did the things that they did, for every person, for anything, for every thing that life threw at me. I would not be here if it wasn't for that. But I also know I wouldn't be here if I didn't have enough inner self strength to say like, I deserve to be here. But if you take a new approach, a new method, a new way, and art was my way. All of this, everything that we're at to this moment was my way. Never thought for a moment it would lead me to here, ever. Not even the slightest bit, ever.